Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jaguars in the Barn video. Today I'm actually in the barn. It's uh, one of the hottest days of the year so far. It's boiling out. It's lovely and cool in the barn, which is nice. You can see me uh, XK it in the background. So I'm filming this on my phone. And when I film it this way round, it shows everything in mirror image. So it's a bit weird when you play it back. So my car is a UK right-hand drive car, although showing it this way, it will show that it's a left-hand drive when you play it back on your computer, tablet, phone, whichever you watch it on YouTube. So anyway, as not been promised, I'm going to tackle the fuel tank. So I've tried to research it. I've read a little bit online about how to do it. And everyone speaks about taking the fuel tank out to get to the fuel pump. Um, so I think I, I'm not sure if we need to take the, the tank out. We can have a look. I'm going to try and do it with the tank in place. I may be wrong. I know I've got a bit more room in the coupe than the convertible. Um, so we're going to take down the um, carpeted cover behind the fuel tank and have a look, see what space that we've got. Because, um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to have to take the tank out. But I say I may be proved wrong. <laughs> I may be eating my words, and we may have to start again. But what I'm going to try and do is to see if I can get the fuel pump out from the top of the tank without having to remove the tank. Now, mine, I have the, obviously the rear parcel shelf because it is the coupe, and it's got the cover which you can take off where the sub woofer would be uh, if you had that package in your car. So it leaves a big hole inside the car. Now I'm convinced I'm going to be able to access the pump. Mine's a single pump unit, so it's on the fuel tank. I'm convinced I'm going to be able to take the pump out from the top of the tank and have enough room to bring it up where through the parcel shelf, but stay within the boot area. So lift it up through the hole in the parcel shelf and slide it out through the boot. I'm hoping anyway. So we'll see. Um, time will tell. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start the car up, see if it fires up. If you see my video series, you're aware that it cuts out intermittently and I'm getting a real loud humming from the fuel tank, which is why I think it's the fuel pump that's on its way out. So we'll fire it up, see if it starts up, and then I should be able to take you around to the boot and up to the fuel tank to see if we can hear it going. So bear with me, I'll spin the camera around. That'll put everything into normal, proper right-hand drive perspective. And then uh, we'll have a look, see what we can be doing today. So bear with me. Right, so the car's unlocked. And don't take the door on anything. So ignition on. Let it go for its system check. Just turn off the radio and the aircon. Right, so here we go. Oh, there you go, look. See the rev counter? Weird, isn't it? I'm convinced it's the fuel pump. Let's go to the boot. You can, hopefully you can hear that. Let's take the cover down. Can you hear that? Hear the vibrating? I touch the tank, I can hear it. I uh, feel it, sorry. I'm hoping over the sound of the exhaust you can hear it. Right. There you go, it's settling down a bit now. You can hear it hunting a little bit. Then it's sort of settling in now. Strange, isn't it? I get no warnings out there, nothing at all like that. If I take it for a drive, put it in gear, that's it, it sorts itself out. Strange. Anyway, let's fire it up. Turn it off, sorry. Set the key out. Close the door. 
So yeah, it's um. Right, let me see if I can take this cover out. I think it just sort of pulls out the way. I'm not sure if there's any um. That will get the uh. Put the boot floor up out of the way. Up to one side. Don't look in this corner of my barn. It's full of junk at the moment. Storage for other people. And we'll take off the uh, battery box. Up to one side. Okay, that gets me to this cover. It does just push into place. There you go, it's out now. If you can see that, just pulled it away. So there's no fixing screws or anything like that. Pop it over here on my workbench. Next to my Jaguar sports bag. Next to my work kit in that. I don't think it's genuine. That was a uh, purchase from Gumtree here in the UK. I think 10 quid or something. Um, right. That. So it's the tank itself. Um, oh, we covers come off. Oh, I just did that. I'll pop that back on in a minute. Anyway, it's the fuel tank. So as you know, you can see, mine's the coupe. There's the fuel tank. As I understand it, time will tell. The fuel pump's in there, inside the tank. And mine has the hole there for what would be the subwoofer. So I'm positive I'm going to be able to, if I can get in there, undo that and then lift the pump up through that hole. So it's maybe a bit tricky to film in such a confined space, but hopefully we'll take you through the steps. If I can't do it that way, plane going overhead. Yeah, if we can't do it that way, then I'll admit defeat and we'll have to take the tank out. Um, which I don't really be doing, but we're going to try and do this shortcut if we can. So I'm going to try and get the camera set up somehow to film it. Um, and then we'll see what we can do. But first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. So we're just going to disconnect the battery. I'm just going to come onto the, um, uh, side already just undone it, tweaked it. Take him off and push that right down out the way. So there's no chance that you can make contact with a battery again. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is, if I can get my camera popped up here somewhere. Oh, I don't think that's too bad. Let me just put the light on. Okay, we're going to get this camera set up and then we'll set to it. Right, so I think what we're going to start off with, if I can disconnect this top plug, which just pushes in on the side and pulls away. I guess right, if I can uh, disconnect this, I'm assuming is a um, return pipe or a breather pipe. I can disconnect that. And that should allow me to rotate. It looks like it just rotates out. So let's get me pliers on that. Yeah. 
Um, right, let's, let me just grab my pliers a moment. All right, so I apologize if my hand gets in the way, but as you can imagine, it's a pretty small space. Okay, that's that free. I'm not sure if that would just prise off or spin off. Looks like it lifts out. Ooh. There we go. Let's get the right way up. Forward part, if you can see that. So let's just put that down out of the way. Now, looking at it, that whole case should just rotate out. So I'm gonna get a cloth put on top, give me a bit more purchase. We'll see if we can spin it out. Right, so I'm thinking, if I just go in and show you if I can. Looking at it, so you've got the tabs there, all the way around. So looks like the whole thing just rotates into place. I'm thinking, if I just get a piece of wood, I don't have any metal or metal contact for fear of creating sparks. If I get some, a piece of wood and tap it here on this indent with a hammer to push it that way, I think that should get it moving. I'm hoping so anyway. Um, let's see if you'll be better off over this side. Hopefully that's a bit better for you. Um, it's tricky, it's sort of hanging off my boot floor. <laughs> so let me get a hammer and a piece of timber. Right. So, it's whether I can get in there enough. without it just breaking the wood apart, which is what it's doing. All right, so I need obviously something a bit stiffer. So let me go back to my tools. Right, what I think I'm gonna do because obviously that's an exposed fuel tank now. I'm gonna put this back in. There we go. Because, let's come and stop wobbling. I'm gonna to have to get in there with a piece of metal, I think. Just something that's hard enough. To get on there. Probably really heavy breathing down on my camera. I think this ends 
bit too narrow. I think I might be moving. It's tricky to tell. Let's say space is at a premium. Is that going? Yeah, that's going. It's got it, look. Right. So that's that ring. Hopefully you can see that. That's the ceiling ring off. I'm just going to put that down to one side in the position we took it off. Now, I've got to spin around to the holes. Okay. Now, I was kind of hoping the pump's going to be attached to that, but it's not. So let's disconnect the electrical plug. Hopefully you can still see. And we'll move that out the way. So I'm assuming that's for the pump. So just put that out the way so it doesn't fall down the tank. Right, so now I need to work out <laughs> how the pump's attached inside the tank. So I guess that's why people got through the uh, hole. So let's take you off of here a minute. Oh, I was really hoping that was all gonna be one unit. Let's see if we can see it inside the tank. Let's see if we can see the fuel pump. I can't, obviously, from this position where I'm in. I'm going to get my hand in there, see what I can feel. And maybe coming from the top to see what's in there. So I'll get that top cover off. So I've climbed inside the car. I've removed the subwoofer cover. So I don't have a subwoofer. And let's look now into the fuel tank. Let's see what we can see. There's the pump. It's nice and clean in there, that's a bonus. So what have I got? Is it just a uh, rubber clamp holding it in place? I think so. I'm not sure if I'm going to pull it out while it's filming. Let me have a look. All right, so I'm back in the boot again. Hopefully you can see the pump there. There's one fixing. Holding it in place. So that's what I'm going to try and get out. Yeah. Right. So let me see if I can get back in the car and get down to that fixing. All right, so what I've managed to do is get my hand in there, take off the uh, fuel line. I can't see the picture, so hopefully you can see it. That was just uh, we clipped onto the top of the fuel pump. So I've undone that and took that out of the way. Now there's a little 10 mil screw in there. So I'm hoping if I get on that, that allow me to release the fuel pump. So let's give it a go. All right. As I said, I couldn't film it and do it at the same time, but hopefully you're seeing there now. The fuel pump is out. Let's put the light on. There we go. Fuel pump is out. 
It's pretty straightforward. It's just one seven mil screw holding it in. Which is here. Which basically, if I just stand the pump up, stay. Right. Basically, that's the pump in its place. And the screw went through there and into the tank. The swirl part, I believe they call it. Now, an immediate thing I notice is the electrical connection on my pump is different to the one on that pump. <sighs> but looking at the shape, I wonder if that will all undo and go in there. Only one way to find out and take it apart. But in the meantime, I'm just going to pop the um, cover back on top of the fuel tank just to stop any vapour and leaks. Now, the answer to that is no. I thought they were little screws, but they're not the little rivet affairs. So it appear mine's got the wrong electrical connection from first glance. But I'm going to Take off the filter and see if we can get the cover off and take off the um, actual mount. So let me see if I can do that. So if I just start with the um, filter, I've not got my tripod here with me, so it's uh, tricky doing it with one hand. Let's see if I can set up my camera a moment. Right, hopefully this will stay and it won't fall down. <laughs> so I'm just going to start by um, got my pliers. Just take off the old filter. He says, let's get the bag off first of all. that way so if I try and separate it so if I try and pull the mount away from the pump there we go and then try and slide it up at the same time and get the old uh, Rubber mounts out of the way, won't be using them again. And then, yeah, just need to try and slide it over this top end, like so. Push the electrics through. Great. We'll be reusing the mount. So I'm just going to pop the rubber foot back on again for safekeeping. Put that to one side. Yeah, we can see now this is all molded, it's all part of the pump. Yeah, fortunately, I'm going to have to get another pump. So that's going to have to be a short delay in filming when I go and do that. So uh, we'll pick this up in a day or two then when I get myself a different pump, one with the right connectors on it. Ah, it's a shame, isn't it? So I can pick that up to see me. I've got a bit, I've got a bit of a sweat on. Um, right, so I'm going to pop to the shops 
I probably won't have one in stock locally, so I might have to order it. But through the sheer magic of YouTube videoing of the next scene, you'll see me hopefully with a new pub. So I'll catch you all in a bit. All right. <laughs> oh dear. Come on, Jack. Right. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, it's been five or six days since I was down at the Jag trying to get the fuel pump sorted, waiting for another fuel pump to come through. Um, so I went online to try and order myself another one and go into all the usual outlets like SNG, David Manners, etc. And no one appears to have the original fuel pump in stock. Um, they're a special order item and they range between 250 and 400 pounds. So um, what I ended up doing, I, I, I tried um, another fuel pump uh, that's supposed to be compatible with the car which turned up, which is exactly the same as the one I'd already bought, but it come with this little extra wiring harness. And that's what all the aftermarket ones seem to come with, is this wiring harness. Now, when I bought mine, mine never came with that. Um, so, yeah, they all seem to come with it. So I've not really got time, nor do I want to wait, uh, sorry, pay for a genuine fuel pump, whether I end up ruin that i don't know um but i want to get the car back on the road again there's no point in being down my barn stuck like the way that it is so what i've ended up doing is i bought another fuel pump and these are only like uh 24 25 pounds something like that um so i bought another fuel pump uh, which comes with this wiring harness it just plugs in there you go so what I'm going to have to end up doing is, so this is the original wiring harness. That's the original terminal ends from the original fuel pump I've just taken off. This is the original wiring harness, which uh, connects up into the fuel tank. So while I've taken this off, I've brought it up to the house to do this, because uh, obviously it came in the post today. So on the original fuel pump, if you can see there, it's got the... I can show you on the top of the terminal so that you've got the negative and positive. So I wanted to find out obviously which wire was uh, negative, which wire was positive, so I can join the two together. So you can see there, that's the positive side, which is the white wire, the black, which is nice and easy, is the earth. So then on the new pump, the terminals are also denoted, so positive and you can see on the top there, negative. So again, negative is black. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut the original plug off, solder these wires together. So what goes to the yellow, black to black. So I still retain the original plug. Um, I got a bit of heat shrink and me soldering iron and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to snip off the plug uh, so we can solder it together. And then we can... Um, See about, sorry, beg your pardon. I'm here sort of confusing myself here now. So we're going to snip off this plug and obviously solder these wires to these wires. So we can then use the aftermarket plug, which will go then to the original wires here through the connector to the original plug in the fuel tank. Right, get them in the end, Simon. So yeah, we're going to snip these off here. So we don't need this plug. Uh, so that will get discarded. I'm going to keep it though. So I'm going to leave some wire on there. Um, so we're going to keep it. So you never know. It might go back to factory one day. I might need to if this fuel pump's a load of old rubbish. So I'm going to give myself a couple of centimetres of wire. And then uh, we're going to solder these together. So I'm going to get on and do that now. Right. So what I'm going to do, as I said, is move a bit of fuel pump out of the way. I'm just going to cut this plug off. So I'm going to leave myself a couple of centimetres of wire. I'm just going to uh, slip that away. I don't know why you can see this. So I'm doing it on the kitchen table. 
There you go. So leave ourselves a bit of cable and we're going to cut it through there. Once again, I've not got the tripod or anything to hand, so it's uh, a little bit tricky doing it with one hand. Mm. So I'm never not being prepared. Right. I've only got scissors in the house. Hang on. Right. Let me just put this down a minute. Cut that blimmin' wire. <laughs> Right, why is it cut? Da -da. So I'm just going to strip the ends off. Again, I can't do it at that angle. Right. So, there you go, so it strips the wires back. And all we're going to do is solder them together like that. So let me do that. You don't really need to see me doing that. And then we'll come back to the video once that's done. Okay, so we've done the join. So new fuel pump back in the original bracket. We've cleaned up the rubbers and they're absolutely fine to isolate all the vibrations. Hopefully they're okay. And then we've uh, soldered a bit of heat shrink around the terminals and then the original plug to plug into the car. So that's the fuel pump wired up. So we've got to do now is take it back down to the car. So this on the bracket here, that's the only fixing inside the fuel tank is that. So there's just a little bolt which goes down through that and holds it into the bracket inside the fuel tank. And then obviously the rubber is to isolate the vibrations to stop the noise from happening or to try and limit it. So the fuel hose goes on top of here with a Jubilee clip from the factory. And on the underside, there we go, that's where the um, filter goes. There's a little filter element which goes on the bottom of there. That then goes inside the tank. That then plugs into underneath the tank. Let's go to put it back together. But it's going to be this bit, putting the bolt back through there, blind, is going to be the challenge. So we'll see how we get on. So let's get it back down the car and see about getting it installed. Okay, right, so we're back down the car. So we just need to um, take the ring back off again. And the battery still disconnected. Move the ring. Move there. So that's where my fuel pump is going to plug back into again. So first of all, I need to get the um, fuel line back out, which is just here. So I'm going to fix that onto the fuel pump before I put the fuel pump in. We'll get our fuel pump and um, connect it on there. Just going to go and check inside the tank the orientation of the pump, just to remind myself it's been a week. Okay, so we'll just have a quick look inside. So the fuel pump goes inside the tank in that orientation. So the tab faces almost the, the rear left tail light. So I don't want to put any pressure on the fuel lines. So this fuel line then needs to go on that way round. Uh, 
like so. And we just need to make sure that we nip up that Jubilee clip. I'm trying to do it so my hands aren't in the way of the film. It's pretty tricky to see. I'm trying to make sure it's all the way on. Sorry, I know you can't see much. Let me see if I can put the camera in a better position. Okay, hopefully you can see a bit better there. My hands are still going to be in the way, I apologise. I've got the fuel line on. We're just going to nip it up. Keep a lead clip. Gonna apologize. You can't see much. Let's do that with a uh, socket a moment. All right, so we've got a six mil socket. I have to get these parts for any plastic. Do. Right, I've taken the wiring out of it a moment, just to make it a bit easier to put in. So I need to go inside the car now and try and put the um, screw in. So once again, I'm not sure how I'm going to film it. We can't see much, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, well, I'm just gonna have to go inside the car, put it back in again, and apologize, you're not gonna be able to see me do it. But basically, the fuel pump is gonna go back in again. Just one screw holding it in place. And then I'll put the wiring on. But I'll put the pump in, I'll put the bolt in place, and then I'll pull the camera over the hole if I can to show you it fixed back in. So bear with me. Right, so I managed to get the pump back in. Generally only took a couple of minutes. I'm going to see, again, I can't see the screen, so it's going to be tricky to see what you can see. So there's the pump. Hopefully you can see it in there. So there's one screw there that holds it down. Fit on the button, bottom fuel line on so that's it in place <laughs> just need to put in the um wiring harness so let me just clip you back onto the car and then uh, we'll see about putting the wiring on all right so just need to um plug this in this will probably end up being the hardest bit <laughs> all right so i'll get my hand in there So I, what I don't want to be doing is dropping it at this stage. Yes. Right. That is on. Now we can look to um, pull it back together again. How exciting. So let me pick up the cap and we'll look to um, reconnect it all back up again. All right, so got the cap again. So this plugs in to, oh, what if it matters which side it goes to? Let me just double check, see if it goes to the left or right, because some of these have dual pumps. Probably doesn't matter, but I want to put it back in the same place. So bear with me a moment. Right, so I've just checked <laughs> from where I took it out. And it's plugged into the right side. So we're just going to do the same. Plug it into the right side. 
and then we can see about putting this back in the hole. Right, just want to make sure it's round the right way. And the locking ring goes back on top again. So just need to maneuver it around the breather pipe and whatever else. So, and then we just need to tighten it up again. Excuse my arm. So that's it in position. So whereas before I knocked that backwards, I have to do the same, but on this side now, knock it forwards. So um, let's try and move the camera around a bit more so you can see. Just going to try and um, knock it on the ring to tie that up. So it all closes up. Right, and that's it as it was before, so the tabs are touching. So, breather hose can go back on. Let's see if I can do that. Perfect. There we go. Just need to bring the clip down. So we'll do that. Get me pliers in on there. So, and then let's call plug back in, click to home, and there we have it. 
that's the um, fuel pump replaced. I guess all there is to do now, we'll put the um, battery terminal back on and see about firing it up. But because we've had the uh, tank top off, it released vapors obviously into the boot area. Although I'm in the barn, it's well ventilated. I'm going to leave it for just, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour. Let the vapors dissipate before I attempt to reconnect the battery to just in case. And then we'll show you again there from uh, startup. So, right, we'll come back on again in a minute. Okay, so I've waited probably 20 minutes or so. It's popped up the house, had a drink. So I've just come down, put all the covers and all that back on, connected the battery up. So that's all on. So let's close the boot up. Take ourselves to the car. We'll have to reset the windows and everything so I've had the battery disconnected. But I'm sure you all know how to do that. Right. I'm probably expecting it to stall or run a little bit lumpy until all the um, fuel through. So I'm just going to switch on the ignition just a couple of times just to prime the fuel pump. once more and then we'll go for a start Happy days. Let's check out the back. A little bit of water's come out, look. It's to be expected. You see where it's been running a little bit roughly. You see how sooty the edge of my tailpipes are. So, well, there you go. Fuel pump on. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> there we go. Fuel pump's in without taking out the fuel tank. Now, no, my luck, it probably wasn't even the fuel pump that was broken. It's probably something up the engine end, but I'm convinced it was, but you never know. Uh, but anyway, it's a job ticked off the list. Um, they do fail on these cars. You see a lot of cars advertised uh, for sale with not running properly down to fuel pumps. Um, so anyway, I'll give it a go. We've done it, and we've managed to do it without taking the fuel tank out. Um, and once again, I'm going to put something at the start of the video, but, you know, by all means, drain all the fuel out of your fuel tank, take the fuel tank, do it how you want to do it. This is how I have chosen to do it. It's not a demonstration on how to do it. I'm not telling you you should do it the way that I have done it because you're dealing with highly flammable petrol. You know, the slightest spark, the whole lot could go up. You've got to be super, super careful. Now, I've worked on a lot of fuel systems over the years. I'm not to say that I'm an expert, so please... This isn't a how-to guide. I'm just showing you how I have done it. Okay? Are we clear? Have I got that out of the way? Right, please don't barrage me with I should have drained the fuel out and I should have done this and that and the other. This is how I've chosen to do it, okay? Just at home as a hobbyist, okay? You please follow all health and safety guidelines that's relevant to you in your country no matter where you are, okay? Right, sorted. Anyway, I'm happy. The fuel pump's in. The fuel pump's working. I never had to take the tank out. Um, and all that sort of stuff. So realistically, if I was to do it without filming it, oh, I don't know, maybe an hour, two hours, just to like muck around with the wiring and get the uh, the pumps.
Hear that? My engine's just stalled. So we'll go and check that out in a minute. But anyway, it might, there might be a part two to this video. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate uh, you watching my series. Um, and if you're liking what we're doing, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you would like to. Um, and we'll see you on the next video. If I find out anything more sinister about that just stalling, I'll let you know. But hopefully it's just the fuel running through the system and maybe an air leak. Or, I don't know. But I'll let you know on the end of this video if there's anything to come. But if not, happy days. I'll see you all next time around. Take care, everybody. We'll see you all later. From Jack, who's in the barn. Bye. All right, we're all good. Just for those that are wondering at the end of the video, <laughs> just taking a red drive and it all seems okay. <laughs> So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. So, one of our next videos we're going to be doing is a service on the car. So, check back in for that one. But, yeah, fuel pump, done. We're driving, no lights, no restricted performance, no nothing like that. So, yeah, it must have just stalled. Maybe add a little pocket of air or just letting all the run the fuel the fuel run through <laughs> before um, the new stuff in the fuel pump went in. I don't know. But there you go. We're all good. So, right. See you all next time, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.